Hey everybody, Ash here with Sense with the weekly fragrance rotation video. It's been a long time since I've done one of these, so I figured might as well do a new one. This is going to be seven fragrances that I wore for one week, and this was actually my fragrance rotation a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there was a big heat wave that came through the United States. It got really, really hot. The heat index was through the roof. So most of these fragrances here are going to be fragrances that I reached for just because it was really hot. So that's gonna be fresher fragrances, lighter fragrances for the most part. So without further ado, let's jump into this seven fragrances. It's time for another weekly rotation. The one thing you'll notice here is a lot of these fragrances are cheapies. Uh, basically my thought process there was I wanted to wear something that I didn't really care if I refreshed multiple times throughout the day or went heavy with the trigger because they were cheap fragrances, super easy to replace, so it was no big deal. I could just spray them on really heavy and go if I wanted to or spray them on again multiple times throughout the day. The first fragrance is one that I hadn't even worn a single time until this rotation. So basically I'd had it for a while, had never gotten a chance to wear it, and I figured now's as good a time as any and went with it. It is this one, Davidoff Cool Water Pacific Summer Edition. This one was the 2017 summer release for Cool Water. And there are a lot of fragrances that have summer releases every single year. So if somebody's a really big fan of a particular fragrance line, it becomes a collectible thing as much as just collecting in general. Uh, it's like collecting the entire summer line for these fragrances. Some of the biggies that have summer releases are CK1, uh, Low DC by Issey Miyake, Cool Water, and Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. Of course, there are others out there, but those are some of the bigger ones that people collect. The notes in this sound really appealing, actually. It's got tangerine, grapefruit, mint, basil, and juniper. Those notes, to me anyway, sound like something really refreshing. This one, though, is pretty basic, if I'm being honest. The herbal blend here does come across fresh, then it's got a synthetic citrus and a brisk juniper. Of course, this does have similarities to other summer releases in the Cool Water line, as well as the original Cool Water. Basically, the simplest way to put this one is if you took the original Cool Water and then you turned that into a shower gel, that's what this smells like. This one is just a clean, straightforward, fresh summer scent that's really, really cheap, and sometimes that's all you want. Performance is not good, but you can spray this on over and over and over again. Does not matter because it's cheap, it's easy to find. You know, you can go heavy on this one and use the whole bottle up and buy another one for 20 bucks. That's the first one, Davidoff Cool Water Pacific Summer Edition. A Little bit basic, but smells nice. Next up is the one that I would consider the, uh, the densest one out of this bunch. So this is the one that's probably the least fresh if we were going to rate these on a scale. It is Bulgari Man Wood Essence. There's citrus, vetiver, cypress, benzoin, and cedar in this fragrance. And there is a new flanker to this fragrance called Bulgari Man Wood Neroli, which would probably have been better suited to be worn in higher heat, uh, but I don't own that one and I wanted to give this one a wearing, so I did. This one opens with lemon zest, a sugary sweet citrus, and a little bit of a creamy undertone that to my nose smells really pleasant. This one comes across sweet, aromatic, and fresh, but not necessarily woody, or at least not overly woody. There obviously are wood notes here, and the fragrance is named Wood Essence, but this isn't really what I would think of as a true wood-centric fragrance. It does have cedar and cypress as notes, uh, but it's more to me a green fragrance, uh, fresh, aromatic, and sweet. And to be honest, for this being a wood fragrance, there probably is a, a little bit more sweetness in here than I would like. Uh, if they took that sweetness and maybe toned it down a little bit and took the wood notes and amped those up a little bit, I probably would enjoy it more. But that being said, I still think it's a solid fragrance. And again, smells really nice to me. Next up, we have a classic cheapie. For the longest time, this was basically the go-to cheap summer fragrance. If somebody was new into fragrances and they said, oh, what's a nice smelling cheap summer fragrance? Nine times out of 10 people would say, oh, get this one, get this one. And it is Nautica Voyage. This one, 
I had not worn in such a long time. And when it was really hot out, I saw it in the cabinet and I was like, let's go with that again. You know, it's a, it's a classic. Some people are probably going to disagree with that and say it's not a classic, uh, but to me, it is in its own special way. Lotus, mimosa, musk, apple, and green leaves are some of the notes here. And one thing really quickly about Nautica Voyage, my bottle has a metal cap. So this is the older style bottle. If you buy this new nowadays, uh, it comes with a plastic cap, which is the same as the other Nautica Voyage bottles. They all have plastic caps now. So the older ones have these metal caps and According to some people online, the older bottles with the metal caps have much greater performance than the new plastic cap bottles. I can't confirm that because I don't have a plastic capped Nautica Voyage, so I can't compare the two, but be aware of that. This one is an aquatic with a sharp green apple, and then those green leaves, those green notes, those are readily apparent in here. You can definitely pick them up. To some people, this gives off a cucumber vibe, so that's going to be your aquatic notes mixing with the green notes. A lot of times that does give off a cucumber kind of scent. And then there's a decent amount of musk in the dry down here as well. Uh, this one though, a fantastic cheap fragrance, one that you can spray really heavy and not really care about. It's easily found in the US. Uh, it's at TJ Maxx and Ross and Marshall stores basically all across the country. And if for some reason you can't find it there, you can always order it off the internet for next to nothing. Next up is a Guerlain fragrance. This is one of their designer style fragrances, if you want to call it that. It is Lome Ideal Sport. Neroli, vetiver, watery notes, and almond are some of the main notes in this fragrance. Now this one might get lumped in a little bit with Lome Ideal Cologne, which comes in the white bottle. Uh, personally, between the two, I do prefer Cologne to Sport. But on the day that I wore this, it was uh, very warm outside, very hot, and this one worked out a little bit better than cologne because cologne can come across a little bit denser, a little bit sweeter. Uh, it's just not quite as easy to wear in really high heat as this one is. This one does not have the big citrus punch that cologne does. Instead, it kind of replaces it with an aquatic note. It does retain that sweet, creamy almond note from cologne, that's here. It's just the citrus is basically dialed down a little bit. The thickness of the fragrance dialed down a little bit. There is still a little bit of a citrus vibe here though, coming from Neroli. Of the fragrances in this list, this is one of the more expensive ones. Uh, not the most expensive, but one of the more expensive ones. And it does smell of a higher quality, in my opinion, than most of the ones on this list if we're just going by ingredient quality. There's a little bit of vetiver, a little bit of patchouli in the dry down of that fragrance, but more than anything, it's just a mass appealing aquatic fragrance with that almond twist and Guerlain quality. All right, next up is a Dolce & Gabbana light blue flanker. There are some light blue flankers that I hate, uh, like Italian zest, but this one I think is really nice. It is swimming in Lapari. Salt and Broxen grapefruit, some of the main notes here. And this one is definitely a sea salty fragrance. It's a salty aquatic with a good amount of ambroxan, though officially they call it ambergris, but it's ambroxan, and a nice citrus blend of grapefruit and orange. It's a clean fragrance. It's not a dirty aquatic. Sometimes you get those aquatic fragrances that smell like seaweed or they smell like the actual ocean, maybe in not the greatest part of the ocean, maybe a slightly dirty beach, and you get that kind of dirty aquatic feeling uh, going on with the fragrance. This one is cleaner, though again, it is salty. That one as well has really solid projection, really solid longevity, at least as far as summertime fragrances go. So that one is one that you don't have to really reapply over and over throughout the day. I usually get six to seven hours of longevity, which is really solid. And like I was talking about earlier with this being a summer release, the uh, Cool Water Pacific Summer Edition. This as well was a summer release. This one came out in 2015. So this was the 2015 limited edition summer release, but you can still find this online easy. All right, next up is a Salvatore Ferragamo fragrance. This is one I actually picked up at TJ Maxx. Uh, there was a time when this entire line was found at TJ Maxx for really cheap, like $15, $20 for a 100 ml bottle. Uh, this one is Aqua Essential Colonia. So you had this one, you had the original Aqua Essential, then you had Aqua Essential Blue, and they were all at TJ Maxx, and that's actually where I picked mine up at. This one has orange blossom, lavender, clary sage, watery notes, and bergamot. 
as some of the notes in the fragrance. This one is a classic Italian cologne style of fragrance. It shares similarities to Aqua de Parma Colonia. Although I would say between the two, this one probably is gonna come across a little more modern, a little more mass appealing than the Aqua de Parma. And then the Aqua de Parma is gonna have a little bit of a higher quality of ingredients used. But this one is much, much more affordable than the Aqua de Parma. You can find this online, 100 ml bottle, I think in the 22 to 24 dollar range. And that is very inexpensive. It's a semi-aquatic with a nice herbal feel that has an almost barbershop type quality to it. Now it's not a classic barbershop fragrance. It's definitely not that. It just has uh, a similarity in the way it comes across. Uh, the type of cleanliness that it puts across is very similar to a barbershop scent. And there's also, of course, a touch of citrus in there with the bergamot. This one is a really nice, fresh, clean fragrance that again, being super cheap, you can spray on over and over and over throughout the day if you need to refresh. And last up is my newest fragrance of this bunch. It is a Prada Loam Water Splash. So this is the newest in the Prada Loam line. I have a review on this coming out really soon, so I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I'll go into more detail on this in that review. But just really quickly, this is essentially another summary take on the Prada Loam DNA. There's already Prada Loam Low, but this is taking that and trying to make it just the tiniest, tiniest bit of uh, an even more summery fragrance. And I will tell you guys, this is really close to Prada Loam Low. It's not the exact same, but it is really close. To the point that some people who maybe are not used to looking for differences in fragrances and things like that, might smell them uh, at the same time and think it's the same fragrance. So like I said, while there are differences, and I'll get into that in the review, they're very similar. To the point that if you have Prada Loam Low and you're not just the biggest Prada Loam fan, it would be redundant to own the two. Leave it at that. I'll, I'll talk more about this on the review coming up. All right guys, that is it. That was my rotation for some really high heat days. For the most part, I guess you could say I kept things blue and white, at least in terms of the colors that these fragrances are trying to portray, other than that one, of course. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Let me know what you've been wearing lately, and I'll see you guys next time with another fragrance rotation, and hopefully it won't be so hot out this time. Thanks, guys.